and action. What's up guys, Calvin Bowie of FKN Deliciousness. YouTube, if you demonetize me for this, I swear to God, I'll have to change my channel name. We are in Taoyuan today and we're gonna take you to one of my favorite Vietnamese restaurants. Now, this is not the typical street food restaurant that you're gonna see in Saigon. This is a much more elevated, oh, come on guys. A much more elevated uh, restaurant. It's called Lang Restaurant, located in Taoyuan. It's at 22 Dang Hu Pho. And I'm gonna show you what it is all about. That is Lang Restaurant, 22 Dang Hu Pho. Whether I screwed up the accents or not, you guys can Google it. I'll put it on the description also. We'll take you inside. Again, this is, you know, Vietnamese food at its best. One of my favorite restaurants in town. And uh, we'll be able to hang out here and show you around. Show you guys the, uh, the slogan here, Lang, reconnect meaningfully. I'll ask the uh, general manager what that means in a little bit. And here he is right now. Ben, welcome. What's up, Lucas? All good, all good. All welcome right. to Lang. Hi. Hi. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Good. <laughs> nice to meet you. Who's that? It's our restaurant manager. Restaurant hello. manager. Hey, hello. How are you? Yeah, <laughs> all right. Should we have a seat? Yes, please. All right. Have a look around. This dining room is exceptional. Look at that painting. We'll sit here and we'll look and we'll gaze out onto the, uh, the streets. And as we sit down here, whoa, we'll pull the menu out and then we'll get to see what we're eating here. Turn this around. I am getting much better at using this DGI Pocket 2, I have to say. All right, hold on. Let me put down the uh, tripod. Now, I know what you're going to say. You sh I should edit that out. But since this is all a one continuous shot show, you're going to see the blunders, the bloopers, the real life of, uh, of restaurateurs. And who's talking for a glass of rosé, I would say? I'm not going to say no to rosé, because if anybody knows on the first two episodes, I love drinking. Are you going to join me for a glass? Yeah. <laughs> Why not, right? Well, I also never say no to a rosé. Oh. And then uh, have a seat, hang out. We can chat a little bit. That looks good. All right. Hey, guys. Lucas, to you. Coming. Thanks, man. Thanks for coming. Thank you very much. Good to have you here. Oh. Where is this uh, rosé from? It's a South African rosé from uh, Anthony Rupert and it's a fresh dry rosé. We have it usually in our happy hour for 400,000 just to keep uh, the place busy, have some people outside in the terrace sitting, enjoying life, enjoying Vietnamese food with some great wine pairings. How many bottles can you drink? Personally? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you. Too, too many, too many <laughs> that, uh, that uh, keeps killing my budget. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I've known this guy for a couple of years and you are not an F&B guy to begin with. That wasn't your trade, right? Uh, it was actually. I came here to Vietnam to open a luxury resort. As an God, I'm so bad. I should do some more production, pre-production on this. But uh, I was also working in wine, so that's my yeah. big love. Is the, the wine part uh, was always part of my life. I did my summer year when I was 18 back in Austria, and then when I came to Vietnam. It was always one of my passion, especially the food and the wine pairing. Really? And then I had the opportunity to work for a wine importer here. Then I was working in the Philippines for a wine importer as well in sales and marketing. And then for a Chilean Argentinian winery as an export manager for whole Southeast Asia. That was actually the time when we uh, met the first time. So yeah. I guess that's why it might have been the, the misconsumption. But uh, yeah, now I'm back in the F&B business and uh, Happy to work in a, such a beautiful place like here. Cool, cool, cool. I'm sure all the ladies that are watching this channel, the six viewers and subscribers that I have are asking, is this guy single? Well, at the moment, still, yes. <laughs> like right this make moment, right? Right offer. this moment, right? <laughs> exactly. 
All right. I came here for one thing. Actually, two things, right? So the first thing I came here for was the amazing appetizer platter that you're going to bring out in a little bit, right? It's going to be your first treat. Okay. What is in this appetizer platter? Platter. Well, first of all, to uh, go to the concept of Lang, what we are trying here, many people misconceive this as a fusion restaurant, mm. but we are not fusion. We are not making a compound burger. We're not bringing two, nice. two levels together or two different cuisines together. What we are trying to do is to elevate the Vietnamese cuisine, make a modern adaptation. Many of the dishes what we serve today in Vietnam, they are very traditional and they're not really changed throughout the, the last century, I would say. And that's what we're trying to do here. Elevate it, make a modern application, play sometimes with the flavors or with the presentation as well, and bring the foods back together while still everything is locally sourced, except our beef and our duck that's coming from Australia, but it's just to keep the quality as well. <laughs> I say this, right? You know, the, the idea of like authenticity food, authentic, authentico, that, that's, I think it's long gone. I think these days, food is, you tell a story with the food, you tell a story with the flavors. You, you want somebody to eat the food and then remember something about their life. No matter what walk of life they come from, no matter what country they come from, love is love. Like you, when you eat something, you taste that love in it. You know that that's what I want to eat. So to say, oh, you know, the, the, the tacos that I make, they're not authentic. Oh, hell no, they're not authentic. And the food that you guys serve, it's not authentic. Oh, hell no, it's not authentic. It is something that is really well thought out within parameters, right? You're not going to try to add something too over the top where it overshadows the actual dish. You're just trying to use better ingredients, better techniques to take something that was done hundreds of years ago, hundreds of, let's say a hundred years ago, and you're trying to make it modern day. Exactly, so it's also like, uh, for example, our duck chasil. What is uh, usual here is a pork chasil. Not many people are doing it with some other, I would say, animal dishes, right? So we are taking the duck, we make the whole chasil process, and then having the sticky, but very uh, soft and tender duck. So that's our uh, adaptation, I would say. Also our fried spring rolls, we're not doing it with pork and shrimp, we're doing it with scallops and chicken. So we're still taking authentic Damn. and Vietnamese uh, ingredients, but wrap it in a new and uh, I would say modern way. Food should never, there's always, it's great to have tradition. I'm from Austria, we have a lot of tradition when it comes to food, to beer, to drinks, to coffee, whatever. But it's sometimes good also to break the tradition bring out something new and all maybe inspire and open the eyes of some other people around you as well and move on the whole movement of the this newly coming Vietnamese cuisine which is now popping up in the US, in Europe, basically everywhere in the world gets a lot of recognition for its freshness, for its great flavors and yeah, we are, we are trying to take all of that and put it into the next level, the next step where we think Vietnamese cuisine should actually go. I'm going to quit the show right now and he's going to take over the whole entire show because he's much more illustrious <laughs> and eloquent, two words that I looked up before I got here, uh, than I am. But uh, thanks for having me here, man. And man, it's such a pleasure. I okay. hope you really enjoy the food as well. Um, Keep on drinking because... Yes, uh, that's actually uh, the whole bottle is waiting for us. <laughs> we, we have nothing else to do. <laughs> COVID times are tough on everybody. They are. We've been in Vietnam now with COVID for 12, almost 13 months. What have you guys done to pivot, transition, uh, to keep the diners uh, happy? I mean, what are you guys doing right now? Well, we take COVID actually as a, as a new chance. Um, with the challenge, you always have to find new ways. So we are expanding our, our services. We're doing now also office and home catering. Um, we are going much towards into the delivery options as well. Where, well, before was our main target to bring the guests here, yeah, enjoying yeah, yeah, the yeah. beautiful atmosphere. Sure. But yes, uh, COVID with the challenge you grow. And then, of course, we're changing the menus more frequent. Uh, yeah. We're trying, trying to bring something new, something interesting. We are investing in our marketing. 
so also that becomes uh, more of a flow now than it was before. It's a, it's a professional company who is taking care, they're supporting us a lot and uh, also we're bringing in new products, uh, new suppliers with great ideas. They're always happy and uh, helpful to push you as well as a brand. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I think uh, days like these days, they are hard for all of us, but um, it also gives you a new opportunity of growing and uh, thinking about outside of the box and maybe do something what you would have not be daring to do a couple of months ago. <coughs> That's right. But now, if you don't try, you don't know. You can do it for two or three months. Not much will change in the end. It won't. Know. And you know, as long as you keep your quality, you keep the core of why you do what you do. And you know, this is the time you know to experiment again. When times are COVID-free, things are working so well. And you know, I, I don't want to change what's not broken. But in this time, it makes me start thinking about okay, what does the diner need? What is the diners? What is what is their what is their real? Why do diners eat our food? That's what I wanted to say. And if they can't come to us, how do I bring that experience to them? Exactly. You know, on a personal standpoint, how has COVID affected you personally? I, I miss traveling. Oh, I know. <laughs> I, have to say, I know. I really have to say. Um, Where did you I go last before? Uh, last one was actually right before the, the borders closed, was in Chiang Mai. Oh. Had a couple of days in Chiang Mai uh, just to get out of, uh, out of Vietnam. But yeah, that was last year in March, more or less uh, the first week of March, right after we had the, the lockdown. Yeah. And since then, uh, I didn't even leave much of Saigon. So <laughs> have, you, have you traveled much throughout the country? No, also not. No, wow, no. you stayed in Saigon. I had uh, one weekend in Nanyang three weeks ago. How was it? Uh, but it was also was for work. So oh, was it really? <laughs> it was also for work. <laughs> so it was not much of a uh, time to enjoy. Yeah. But it was good to get out of Saigon. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yes. It's uh, it's it's needed sometimes, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a beautiful city. I love the vibe and uh, I love uh, the whole experience about Saigon. But it's also good to to get out of it. Uh, yeah, I mean, some days having some fresh air at the beach, you know, and uh, seeing Nang, Now it would have been perfect to go to Hoi An. I lived there before and... Uh, because there's and zero. <laughs> there is nobody in Hoi An right now. The it's streets ridiculous. are not littered. There aren't backpackers hanging out. Oh man, it's, uh, a, it's, oh a, dream, my God. it's a dream city now. I lived there before a year, right? And uh, How was the flooding when you were there? Um, I lived in Anman Beach, so okay. I was one of the fortune boys. Um, I didn't get much affected by the floods. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, in the city itself, it was two times a year, it yeah. was uh, pretty much like un unwalkable or... For those who don't know Hoi An, you know, Google it, Hoi An is a UNESCO world site, heritage, heritage <laughs> site, and it is, uh, it, it's, it's beautiful, man, it's, it, it, just imagine what, it, it was what life was like 60 years ago, yes. cobblestone streets, small little houses, no, no skyscrapers allowed. No there. skyscrapers anywhere. Well, and the, I the, think the, you cannot even build over 10, 10, 10 stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's like, yeah. But do you realize that because there's no high buildings, the sunsets are just phenomenal? It's amazing. Yeah. yeah it's been amazing. And I think I had in this, in this year there, I had two super moons. It was incredible. What's so, a super moon? And like when they're getting really, really big. Really? Uh, it was amazing, man. Lying in Lime Bank Beach and having more or less like a, a moon the size of your head in front of you. It's just stunning, absolutely stunning. So you were in the Philippines before you were in Vietnam? Uh, well, that was my first uh, station in Asia, but I uh, was only 18 years at this time. Uh, when going to, the, to Manila yeah. and then went back to Austria, finished my education, uh, was working there for a couple of years. And then it was for me time to go again. Got the opportunity for Vietnam, yeah. packed my stuff left Austria. How many Vietnamese people are in Austria? Not the actual number, but say, give or take. Well, I would have said before I moved there, I would have said not many. Mm. Um, since I left, and that's also what I meant before, Vietnamese restaurants are popping up everywhere. Yeah. Very authentic Vietnamese restaurants. So I think the community is growing, or at least coming out now. Yeah. I don't know what they would have done before, but <laughs> now they realize their food is actually really delicious and all the Austrians appreciate it. Yeah. So um, it's a growing community, 
but I couldn't give you any number. Ah, oh, no, it's okay. That's just kind of a joke. Not a, not a clue. Um, how much Vietnamese food do you eat? Daily. Well, I'm working in a Vietnamese restaurant, <laughs> so I'm, I'm enjoying that, my that, lunch that was, for my that was dinner. A dumb uh, question. <laughs> <laughs> that was a dumb question. <laughs> I'm really bad. I'm enjoying our food uh, as much as our guests, so I try to also eat healthy. <laughs> And we, we cook without MSG, which is a huge plus for me. But yes, I mean, I live in Vietnam. I love Vietnamese food. Uh, I love uh, modern Vietnamese food, actually. Sure. What I realized in the last seven years, always when I go to the countryside and they're serving me... Um, Home-cooked. Yes, or sometimes <laughs> the, you know, their traditional sure. foods. Sure. I realized I'm not enjoying everything all the time. Yeah. But uh, in general, like, uh, I mean, can say something bad about a good bar or, or uh, good spring rolls, you know, fresh spring rolls. Uh, you will see later our, our uh, adaptation, which I, I love even more. Scallop and, and chicken. Well, these are the fried ones, right? But uh -huh. then we have our fresh ones, and they, these ones we are rolling in um, green rice flakes. So it gives you an additional structure to it. You have uh, the whole crunchiness of the fresh um, vegetables, but then also from the outside, also an additional crunchiness, which I think again, elevates the whole dish. Starting tomorrow, Lucas is taking over the channel. I'm done, retired. Who has these like descriptive words? I mean, green rice, what? Crispy green, green, green rice. Crispy green rice kernels. My God, this guy is good. Did you will get it and you will enjoy it. I'm, ex I'm excited about that. Um, why? What is the wine culture right now in Vietnam? It's a growing culture. I came here seven years ago, uh, opened my first resort. Maybe it was different because it was also Hoi Yan Da Nang. Mm. But uh, when we did wine events, it was mainly um, foreigners like, like coming even there. Mm. Often the Vietnamese managers did not even take the opportunity to go because there was not general interest. Really? Okay. Now I can see after the seven years, also been working in the wine industry, it's a, such a growing market yeah. and you can see all these big brands pushing in into the market because they want to really have a piece of that cake which is now at the moment going on. Not only in Vietnam, I think whole Asia or Southeast Asia is developing towards that. And people very often misconcepted I think a lot about wine. It was, um, I would say, a lot through the French education as well which came here culinary um, of on the culinary side, it was a very uh, francophile, I would say, wine selection. Uh, but, hold on, hold on, hold on. Francophile. F R A N C O P H I L E. Yes. Francophile. For anybody who can use that word in Scrabble, 62 points to you. <laughs> At least. <laughs> so it was uh, a lot about Bordeaux Reds, uh, Sauvignon Blancs, but from France, right? And now all these new world wineries, they're very, making also very great wines um, for an often reasonable price because they've also better trade agreements with Vietnam. So these pair brands are pushing now in and gives you such a diversity to actually pair this beautiful food from Vietnam with wine. You have a lot of playing between sourness and sweetness where often this wine can really then elevate the food. And then when you, we have in here for example, our beautiful Hutiu pepper. It's an organic, uh, organically grown and handcrafted pepper from Pukok. Um, with all of these ingredients and with all these neat and uh, special add-ons to all of our dishes, the wine can be a, a really big part in the dining experience. That's what we really try here as well. Our wine selection is very low priced because what I want to give our guests is the opportunity to try as many wines as they can and trying it with our food together. Well, with that said, I got 21 minutes and 37 seconds. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Everything. If I were to do a wine show on this channel and call it FKN Wine, no, actually, we'll, we'll have a better name for it, but if I did a wine show on this channel, would you? Dude, I would love to. Really? I would love to. Seriously? I could talk about wine the whole day. Good, because we, we have 40 day. minutes each episode to talk about wine. I think I could just intro it, 
let you go with it. And I love wine. I, I, I love wine. We can do a wine pairing, just trying around what makes you feel better. Can we do it on a weekly basis? Is, is, does that fit your schedule, Mr. Busy Man? Uh, at, the, at the moment, you see, I'm not so busy. <laughs> uh, if you come in for 40 minutes uh, at around yeah. uh, noon, do it. we can sit down. Dude, let's do talk, it, man. Talk about everything. Let's do it. Sure. How many wines are on your list? Pardon? How many wines do you have on your list? Uh, at the moment, we're carrying about 55 wines. That's 55 episodes. Uh, no, 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 no. Let's try to do like two wines, exactly. three so wines uh, uh, an episode. What we're actually doing for this year is a, a wine schedule mm -hmm. uh, or a wine event schedule because we have 18 noble grape varietals. So nine white and nine red ones. You have 18 noble varietals. Grape varietals in the world, right? So that's the official noble grape varietals, which are the ones... I know like four or five varietals. Oh, you will know all of them when I tell you. Oh. But in the end, what you can have with that is, um, for example, we do then next month, we do a wine dinner where we take three Sauvignon Blancs and three Merlots. We will pair it with our food, but the Sauvignon Blancs will be from all over the world. So you drive one from New Zealand, one maybe from Chile and one from Europe, from France. And then you will see how much terroir, climate, winemaking, and where the grapes are actually really coming from makes a change on the wine and that not every Merlot you have or every Sauvignon Blanc is a Sauvignon Blanc. Question. Does what the winemaker eat that morning affect the wine process on winemaking? Uh, no, I think uh, the way how his wife will treat him in the morning <laughs> will more affect it. This guy's too good then. This guy's too good. Okay. This guy's too good. Okay, I'm going to take the camera. I'm going to flip it around. We're going to show you the food. And Lucas is going to put his finger onto the food and explain the food. Then I'll go back and eat it. So here we go. Hold on, man. I got to figure this out one now. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. There you go. Here you are. All right. Let's start off with this right here. So this is the one that we talked already before. That's our chicken and scallop uh, spring, spring rolls, fried okay. spring rolls. Then here we have our seafood lalot. What is lalot? Let's see. Lalot is in the betel leaves wrapped. Betel leaves. Damn, you're good, man. Okay, good. Okay. Then here we have our uh, fried fish cake, crispy fried fish cakes. Okay, what fish is it? Um, it's an hamburgus. Damn, you are good. And here we have our uh, fresh chicken and uh, avocado spring rolls with our crispy green rice flakes. You know, in America we call that avocado, right? Well, in uh, Britain, we call it avocado. <laughs> <laughs> and the final dish? And this is uh, just a, a stem salad or lotus stem salad with uh, fried prawns and some peanuts. Oh, this is, so this is my favorite dish growing up. I mean, this is the dish that I would fight over to get. And then our dipping sauces. And then we have our traditional Vietnamese dipping sauce, which is a, an adaptation from us of the fish sauce. Less fishy, has a little bit more acidity and more spice to it. You can also see it on the, on the chili. And then our seafood sauce, which is one of my most favorite sauces in the world. It's a, a kitchen adaptation from our head chef. And we do it with calamansi, uh, salt, pepper, fresh chili, lime leaves, and, um, and a little bit of fish sauce as well. And this what I would highly recommend you to eat with, for example, with the prawns together or then with the fish cake. And it will give you an additional sweet and sourness play uh, for the, exactly for these kind of dishes where you have already a little bit of structure to it as well. Well then, with that being said, I'm going to click this button three times. One, two, three. Damn it. One, two, three. And then it's going to flip back around and I'm going to sit here. I'm going to drink the wine and I'm going to enjoy this. And never forget, having a glass of wine always elevates the food and brings you a totally different experience. So especially here with the rosé, with the fried things, with the prawns, something light and fresh, especially because this one is very dry, so it doesn't have too much sugar and residential sugar in there and goes really well with uh, dishes exactly like that. Hey, my, my, my glass is empty, dude. That should never be with, let me take care of it. <laughs> I know episode one, I was like kind of really wound up. Episode two, I'm a little bit more free, but episode three with, with my boy Lucas. I think this is really fun. And I'm going to uh, start eating this. All right, brother. This is where I do my work. Do it. Brother. 
friends for so long, dude. Thank you so much for having me. Ah, dude. Ugh. Let's do this. Psst, this is where you kind of leave so I can do the private. Take care. All right. See ya, man. I'm not even going to get a bowl. I'm going to go straight at this right now. All right. We are at 15 minutes and 45 seconds. I got 15 minutes left on this SD card. This is probably going to take me six minutes, which leaves me nine minutes to do the duck. Okay. Okay. Let me push for the duck. Sounds good. All right. So, what did he say? He said, uh, "Fish sauce goes. Oh no, seafood sauce goes well with the lotus and the prawns." So, you got it right. All right, let's do this. Let's start off with the prawns because it's my favorite dish. So the prawns are. Uh, blanched, they're not steamed, and they're not fried, so they're, they're, they're a light blanch. Lotus stem is, how would I describe that? So there's carrots, and there's parsnips that are in the same family. This is a white root vegetable, and it's not so much like parsnips when it's raw, but it's really watery. I guess when you bite into it, like there's a lot of, uh, the word juice is not the right word ever for, for, uh, for food review. It's, it, it just, it, it's, it's very watery, it's very light, it's very crunchy, it's very fresh. And then fried shallots, and I tell you guys right now, fried shallots are the hidden, it, it, it makes food so good. We use it at our restaurant like all the time. Dip into the, the, um, the uh, seafood sauce, and here we go. Mm. That seafood sauce it has a little, uh, <clears throat> it has a kick to it. He didn't tell me that it was going to be spicy. Calamassi brings in a lot of acidity. I think fish sauce is the main uh, vehicle of the dish, uh, of, of that sauce really herby. It's nice because it's thicker than, say, the Vietnamese nuk jam. And I think they do it through emulsification. Let's start off with the... Oh, damn! Let me surprise you with something else. This is where our modern adaptation also comes in. Uh, well, hold on. And you as an American, you might like it. Oh, as an American, I like everything. But okay, I'm listening. Well, we, we call it... Uh, Pizza ga, or a Vietnamese pizza. It's a, a very thin bonseo, but we make it more on the crispy side. Then we take some roasted chicken, chop it up, fill it with sesame seeds and with some uh, onion, and then we uh, cut up some uh, Vietnamese traditional herbs. And now you have a crispy base, quite juicy chicken on the top. And this is um, our new way to make it for, especially for happy hours. And when you come in, you just want to have a light bite with a glass of wine. Then I would always recommend you to have something like that for sharing kind of a little bit of Vietnamese tapas way. And for that, I will serve you a glass of Pinot Noir as well from friends, uh, just because uh, the creaminess and uh, the spiciness of uh, our chicken will go very well with this uh, quite aged Pinot Noir. Do we are gonna get like, 50 views on this on this video. This is going to be so amazing. Okay, three flips. All right. Well, I'm glad you caught pizza and not tacos because if you did, I'd be out of a job pretty soon. All right. So I'm going to leave this alone for a little bit. Put this to the side. <clears throat> and with 12 minutes left, this is going to be interesting. All right. So, Ben Sale. For those who know Ben Sale, Ben Sale is like a Vietnamese pancake and it's stuffed full of shrimp and bean sprouts and right now I'm a loss for ingredients. But I'll keep going on. I'm going to eat this like a taco because anybody who knows me, I love tacos. The chicken's really interesting. Okay, here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Don't give me shit about eating on the on the table. It's a clean table. Mm. 
Mmm. Bun Sal is crispy. It's a little bit oily. It has a lot of pockets in between to make the pancake. They didn't flip it over as a traditional bun sal. They made it like a tostada or like a taco. They, like you said, they added in chicken that's been wok fried, sesame, and he did, the chef did put in the Vietnamese herbs into the stir fry because you can definitely taste the aromatics. And he wants to pair it with a Pinot Noir, which is, by the way, my favorite varietal. And dang, it's good. That's really good. Lucas, that's really good. That's really good. That's really good. Mm. Mm. What is that? What? Yes. That is so good. Now again. Small plates, small bites, pair with wine. It's afternoon. Grab a few small plates. Grab a few glasses. Enjoy life. I mean, this is this is the essence of life, right? All right. Next thing, lalo, right? So usually, uh, lalo, they do a bar lalo, and they do. Um, I guess you know the, the street style. They use. Uh, Beef and they uh, actually they use pork. I'm not gonna lie. They, they call it bala lot, but it's a hundred percent. I think it's gonna be pork. Maybe it is beef, but for that price point, it's hard to say. Anyways, beetle leaf. It's wrapped on the outside, and then on the inside, I think it was uh, I think it was fish cake. But the, no, this, I think this one's fish cake. Well, let's try it out. See how it's see what's all about. Sure. Mm. The beetle leaf brings a great char to the to the dish, but the surprise is in the middle. It is seafood, maybe shrimp, or maybe a squid. Hey, Lucas, but that lot or that 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 lot is 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 squid, shrimp. Yes, squid. 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 Oh. I guessed it. Okay, so the squid is really nice because it has a really uh, seafoody flavor, and the la lot again it brings a great char element to it. Okay, uh, eight minutes, twelve seconds. Okay, continue on. This is the uh, so I'm gonna guess what it is. It's it is thin tofu, thin skin tofu on the outside, and the inside it's jaga. Jaga is basically fish that's been minced down with herbs and spices and they wrap it into uh can you see that yeah you can into a little patty and they fry it up i'm gonna eat this with the seafood sauce because that's so good mm. the thin bean curd skin on the outside gives a great Textured, crunchiness, and then the jacka in the middle. Good jacka should be airy. When you bite into it, there should be a little bit of of give, but it shouldn't be so compressed. And when it's compressed, you know they put a lot of flour in there, a lot of fillers. But something so light and so airy, it really is easy to eat. The next one, what he said was a spring roll. Uh, interesting, because usually spring rolls are just done with, say, any sort of lettuce. They added in mustard greens, so it's gonna have a more of a bite to it. I'm gonna show you guys the inside of it. Like a, shoot, like a sushi roll. Something just fell out, don't mind that. And inside, there is chicken, avocado, cucumber, jicama, and carrot. That's my guess. All right, I'm gonna dip this one into the nuk jam, which is the uh, flavored fish sauce, or the fish sauce that has been, um, his word, elevated. And 
I was wrong. As I always am. The spring roll doesn't have mustard green, but it's lettuce and there's Vietnamese herbs in it. And it really explodes in your mouth. The avocado brings a creaminess to the dish. The jicama and carrot brings the crunch. And the cucumber plays an accentuating role. Did I eat everything? I want to eat the I want to eat the spring roll. Oh, oops. Spring roll guy. Mmm. That's, that's good too. Damn. Alright. Five minutes left. And then I am done. We'll take it all for a minute. Wait, 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 wait. One, two, three. One, two, three. Here we have a green tea leaf smoked duck breast. We smoke them in our smoker with the green tea leaves to really bring the smoking flavor into it. And then we pan fry it out to keep inside the juiciness and uh, the softness. And we serve it with some uh, stir fried um, kalan and then with some brown rice with some millets inside as well to put a little bit of a, on the healthy side as well and we serve it with our homemade duck sauce. Damn, I am being taken care of today. Okay, thanks brother. Oh, and then what are you serving it with? And then I brought you here a glass of Merlot. This one is a little bit more aged, 2016 vintage. And I wanted to give you a little bit an older wine. Uh, this one has especially a little bit spiciness to it. And that goes then very well with the smokiness of the duck and keeps it a little bit more alive for the pairing. Great. Should I use Chuck, a yeah. fork? Should I use chopsticks? Chopsticks, it's the way. Okay. Y'all want to see me use chopsticks and see how bad I am with it? Here we go. All right, so smoked duck breast. Why do you smoke? You, the smoke itself is a flavor, and you want that to permeate within the actual breast itself. During the process, it renders down the duck fat on top, and then you get a really, really, really nice, uh, I'm gonna try to use fingers here because uh, I'm so ghetto. But what you get is you get color like this, right? And then you get the, the, the fat rendered from the, from, from uh, the, render, the duck renders its fat from the top. And then you get a really nice uh, fat, <laughs> I wouldn't call it fat edge, but let's call it fat edge. You got a really nice layer of fat here. And then when you pan fry it, you get this beautiful crispy skin. And then again, you know, you, by smoking it, you bring it to temperature. You can cook it to a perfect medium rare or even rare and then finish it into the pan. It's one of the little secrets we have in the kitchen on why the food tastes better at our restaurants and not at home. Chopsticks. Shut that's up, that's really? What, that's what I do for my kids when they come to the restaurant. Check so that speak, out. So they learn how to eat with chopsticks and we are very happy to take care of you as well. Thank you. Well, <clears throat> I can never say no to, um, to this. Okay. Oh, I just ate the duck, didn't I? Damn it. One more time. I'm running out of time here. Duck. Duck breast smoked in tea leaves, then pan fried. And this is not Vietnamese duck, this is imported duck. Oh, the smoke really permeates, guys. It really gets through the meat. Vegetables. It's beautiful, wild rice. Mmm. And then pairing. Merlot. Mm. <clears throat> this is much more smokier, much more uh, spicier than the Pinot Noir. But I think Merlot in general, depending on the region and the winemaker, they make some really good wines. Okay, with that being said, one minute and 13 seconds left. Guys, I'm so happy to be here right now. 
Thank you to Lucas. Thank you to Lang Restaurant. Thank you to my boy Yun, who owns the, the, the business. We are more than thrilled to be here today, filming our third episode. And what can I say? Sports ball businesses, click the like button if you like the video. Don't click the thumbs down if you can. Subscribe. There's a bell I heard. Somebody just told me today that there's a bell and notification. Click the notification. I don't know what it does, but it might tell you when the new video comes out. And the main thing, oh, so, so, so like, subscribe. Oh, the main thing you guys can do is share this video. 30 seconds left. Share this video with all your friends. I don't care where they're at. I don't care who they are, but please share this video. When the borders open up and it's safe to come to Vietnam, this is where you want to go for elevated Vietnamese food. There's always going to be street food, more episodes to come for street food, but I wanted to take you guys to something that was, I mean, astounding. Nine seconds left. Thank you so much, guys, for watching this show. My name is Calvin Bowie, and this is FKN Deli